show. And if you are watching the show, you'll see I am not alone today in the studio. In fact, I have my very first fur guest with us in the studio. Her name is Angela. We're going to hear all about her story because with her, she has her owner, which is Jan Swarengen. She is the author of Yorkie Who Sings at Midnight, along with Miss Pippa, who is with the Animal Rescue Fund of Mississippi. And joining us by phone is Caleb. And we will get to how he connects to this story in just a second. So welcome, everybody. Thank you. I'm so happy to have you here, Jan, because I have your book, The Yorkie Who Sings at Midnight. And it's a wonderful love story for any of us who have rescued pets. So if you have a rescued fur baby at home, this story is going to tug at your heartstrings. But give us a little background about how you met Angela. Actually, uh, my husband has always wanted a Yorkie. So we uh, kind of scour the, the pages and see what's going on in all the rescue areas. And I saw a picture of her. She was at, um, at a, vet, a local vet. She had been rescued from a hoarding situation and brought to ARF, Animal Rescue Fund, and uh, then piecemealed, you know, milled out for, for vets to, to assess for, for their further needs. Anyway, she was being treated and, uh, for heartworms and various other things. Saw the picture of her, and I said, bingo, you know, that's it. So I, I, I called the risk, I called the vet and I called Pippa and talked to uh, Angela's foster mom and got it set up. And the next thing we know, she's home with us. Well, it's not like Angela was in her prime, so to speak, if that's fair to say, whenever you came across her, which is part of this being a love story and I think so important to share. How old was Angela when you first saw her or got interested in rescuing her? I think she's probably around 12. That's her. That's the guesstimated age. Um, and, and actually, we have an anniversary coming up. It'll be a year we've had her since October the 28th. And I would say Pippa with the Animal Rescue Fund, it's harder, for lack of a better term, to find forever homes for dogs who start to get in double digits. Would exactly. that be fair? That would be very fair, yes. Because, I mean, well, I mean, what there, some of that comes with other responsibilities when you adopt an older animal. So how excited are you guys when people are interested in those that maybe have you know, are wise in years, in their fur years. It's, it takes a very special person to adopt a senior dog. Most people are like, oh, I don't want to do it because I will have them such a short time and I'll fall in love and their lifespan will be with us will be low, short. But it takes a very special person to be able to love a dog and take in a dog that's a senior. Um, they have a lot of a lot of love to give. they got a lot of wisdom to give. They are very, very appreciative. They know from whence they came. And so they, they, they can make a great addition to a family. It just takes the right family to, to want to take in a senior. And obviously, you guys were the right family, Jan, for little Angela. Yep. So how did, but not everybody who rescues an animal at all, even those, those that are considered older, turn it into a book. So where <laughs> did the Yorkie who sings at midnight come from? Well, it comes from the fact that she does sing at midnight. I mean, it, it's not like a, a lyrical song or anything, but when, when she first came in with us, and was settling in, um, she sleeps beside me in the, in, on, on the floor because her vision is so bad, I don't want her to fall off the bed. And I, around between 12 and 1 o'clock or 12 and 4 in the morning, I begin to hear this, and I thought, where is that coming from? And it was her. And I, and I thought, well, this is odd. So after a few nights of everything of this happening, I said, this dog is singing. So I thought, okay, Yorkie that sings at midnight did a little uh, essay on Facebook titled that. And one of my Facebook friends wrote back and said, you should think about turning this into a book. And so we did. We met with uh, Susan Marquez at Mississippi Writers Guild, showed her the essay, and she said, go for it. So overnight that night, um, most of the book was written. It just kind of spilled out of my brain onto the paper. And there we were. There we were. And here we are now on Good Things. You have the book, The Yorkie Who Sings at Midnight. And this is where Mr. Caleb comes into the conversation because you needed some artwork for your precious little book. I'm holding it up. If you're watching over at supertalktv.com, you'll see it. Or at supertalk.fm slash watch, you'll see me holding up the little book. So when it came to finding the right person to illustrate it, how did Caleb come into the picture? It's a, it's a great story. Um I had the illustrations, the type of illustrations I wanted in my mind, and they kind of re reflect the artwork in The Little Prince, which is a famous book. And I sent, uh, I, one of my neighbors is the assistant principal at Germantown High School. 
I called her and I said, do you have any really talented art students that might be interested in doing some illustrations for me? And she didn't hesitate. She said, I got just the person for you. And it was, she gave me Caleb's name. So we, we contacted his mom and she said, sure. I sent him a sketch of what I wanted for the cover. I mean, a rough sketch. And he turned it around in like 15 minutes with the cover. Like I just like I wanted. So I said, Caleb, so I know you've actually stepped out of class and gotten permission to join us here on Good Things today. So I truly appreciate that. So when did you first connect with uh, Miss Jan when she said she wanted you to uh, do the cover for the Yorkie Who Sings at Midnight? Well, I heard that it was for a rescue, and I have two rescue at home, and I love animals. And so when I heard of who was about, and I heard got to hear. Um, Angela's story, I was like, this is it. I have to draw this dog and get her story out there for everybody to, see, to hear. So when did you start drawing? I mean, it's one thing to sort of doodle there in class when you should be paying attention, <laughs> right, Caleb? But it's another thing to be confident enough in your work for it to be a book cover. So where did you pick up your talent for sketching? I have always loved drawing. I've been drawing since as long as I can remember. I even ended up on my mom's first year working at um, the high school I go to. I ended up drawing in Sharpie on the um, desk, which scared both her and me because I was like 10, I think, when it happened. But, yeah, I've always loved drawing. So is that sketch still there, or did you get to take that desk home as part of the end-of-the-year parting gift <laughs> for for that year of school, Caleb? Um, I had to clean it up. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was going to be my next question. From a mom who's got a 9-year-old who loves to draw and doodle, how do you get Sharpie off of a desk? I think that's something we could all learn. Is there some trick to that? Grew up and a magic eraser. <laughs> Mom chimes in on on that one there. You heard it there if you need to get some um, black marker off. Well, I know that there's no need to get off the doodle that you did here. It's gorgeous. I mean, it's dark. It's it's, it's like at midnight. So she said she uh, that you completed it, Caleb, in like 15 minutes. Did you just see her vision? Did you know exactly what, um, what she wanted, even though maybe you hadn't met Angela yet? I just went with what felt right at the time. Have you like, met Angela yet? I have. She's adorable. She, I love her. She is very adorable. Okay, so what was it like, Caleb, to get to see your artwork as a teenager on a, you know, on a published book? It was scary, but amazing at the same time. Well, I think you should be super proud of your of your talents and being piece of Miss Angela's story that gets to go on and be shared with everyone else. And I appreciate your time here on Good Things. What class are you going back to, Caleb? Spanish. Oh, well, we should keep you a little bit longer. <laughs> <laughs> we would hate to rush you back to that class uh, quicker than you have to. No, I am kidding. No, but you are very talented, and we can't wait to see what other works comes out of your future as an illustrator, if that's what you choose to do. Thank you. Thank you. I think I just love this, too. I love so many pieces about um, Angela's story at Jan 1, the fact that, you know, she didn't have the best start um, to her life, which I want to get back to the hoarding uh, piece with you, Pippa, and how um, how common is that and, and what animals are sort of living in those type of situations. But the fact that, you know, even for so many of us, we feel like we've missed our prime or it's not, it's too late to make a difference. And here Angela is. I mean, she's now almost 13, I would I would assume, and she's making a huge impact with just being who she is, which was singing at Big Night and connecting, you know, with others, which proves to all of us that no matter the age of our fur friends, they still have love to give um, in that respect. So did you get the original artwork for the cover from Caleb, or did he keep that? Oh, no, we, we shared it. 
We shared it. I was just going to say, we need to share that. And we're continuing to share Angela's story coming up next here. On, and we're learning more about Angela's uh, life. And she is our fur friend who's joining us today in the Good Things studio. So we encourage you to go over to supertalk.fm slash watch or supertalk t- TV to tune in. You'll see our little fur friend. She's coming up on 13 years. She was the inspiration for Jan's book, The Yorkie Who Sings at Midnight. And you do a great dedication in the book to the Animal Rescue Fund of Mississippi, which we have joining us, Miss. Pippa, and I don't want to let us pass this by because what I love about the book and Angela's story is that every dog is worse or animal. I know do, uh, Angela is a puppy, or not a puppy, but a, an older pet, worth saving. So what do you guys do, the good work that you guys do on a day-to-day basis? Well, ARF is the state's largest no-kill animal rescue organization. And what we do is we take in, rescue, the abused, neglected dogs and cats. Um, we have rescued some pigs and chickens and goats, but... Um, we mostly focus on dogs and cats, but we um, we get them, we rescue them from whatever situation they're in. We get them healthy, we get them trusting, we get them where they're ready for a family, and then adopt them into great, wonderful, safe homes. Um, some dogs come to us in worse shape than others. The group that came with Angela were in a very bad hoarding situation, and every one of them had significant health problems that needed to be taken care of, and heartworms, malnutrition, extreme skin issues horrible matting the matting on these dogs because they were just living in cages um not being touched just until it's time to breed them um and so they were in very very poor shape when they came to us and um so what we do is get them get them turned around and get and them you get to see the before and then you also get to see the after when when uh, families choose to rescue and so what what does it mean for the life of a dog or for just obviously just the population for animals uh, you know in our state when families choose to rescue over maybe going in other routes in terms of finding a breeder or whatever it may be uh, it makes a huge difference in the lives of the animals that we take off the streets and get them in the home there's there's no more value in one animal to another. They were all brought into this earth, and they all deserve a good, safe home. And um, breeding, and there, there are some decent breeders, but for the most part, in Mississippi, in the South, and in, in Pennsylvania, um, breeders are not um, don't don't consider the well well being of the animal, and it's a lazy man's way of making money. Um, but so when someone chooses to adopt. We um, were able to take in more off the street and t- help more lives, and it um, they they love you so very much. They are not they 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 have a deep appreciation from whence they came, as I said earlier, and they give you the very very best. And that we're not going to ever run out. We need to spay and neuter our animals so that we, that we don't have the plethora that we have. I promise you, we will never run out of animals that are needing homes, and so. People adopting do make a huge difference in the world of rescue, and our, they they become a part of the world of rescue when they adopt from a rescue organization. And I can say that too. I mean, we adopted our, our precious uh, Brutus, who was a boxer. We, we rescued him from Arkansas, and they do they just love you a little bit differently. And I I mean, because we have we've we've had we've gone through both situations, and you do feel like you know you 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 just your heart just expands a little bit wider when you have a rescue pet um, at home knowing that you've given them a second chance and now I will say we've never rescued a a two years old is semi older for an older dog Um, I mean for a larger breed but 12 12 is is you know up there in terms of years but I wanted to take this time too on good things today though Jan to share that she still had so much life and love to sort of give and if you are in a stage of life that maybe the idea of having a puppy in your home makes you (laughs) makes you cringe yeah. because they come with their own they you do. know responsibilities and hyperness that don't miss out on good years just because you may not have double digit years and so what would you say i mean i'm sure you and your husband do not regret one day with precious angela oh no not at all um <clears throat> she um she she's just she just has so much personality i mean i never dreamed i thought you know adopting out a or adopting a um uh, an older ill dog been around a long time she also has mammary gland tumors that we really have to watch carefully um that that she would not be you know all that active but we just love her you know well all of a sudden here we have this dog that's all full of life and she she's just she's just a doll she has no regrets i mean i'm sure that her life has been horrible but what she has been able to do is show us as human beings 
the power of forgiveness and the power of loving somebody forward is that, you know, she, when I leave the house, she's at the back door. When I come home, she's still at the back door. And this is supposed to be my husband, Big Solid's dog. You know, well, it's, she's mine. <laughs> And but, she's also paying it forward in the community because you've gotten Angela out and made a little bit of a celebrity out of her. Mm-hmm. So who has she been loving on in the last little while? We have decided to rename ourselves between Angela and Jan. We call ourselves Team Jangela. And we are, have gone to some long-term care facilities and some assisted living facilities, some day, day, day care opportunities for adults. And we read from the book to them and she goes along too well they see her and their hearts melt and my hearts melt and it's like the world is a perfect place to be so it just gives us a brief moment in time where we don't have to think about anything but good stuff which was what we hope we do here on good things and while you know when you think about where these uh, rescue animals may have come from i hope you don't miss the light was just the opportunity that you can give them a better home and that you can bring some joy and some love that maybe you need in your own life uh, too by connecting with these fur friends all right who's the perfect reader for the yorkie who sings at midnight jan you know people ask me if it's a children's book <clears throat> excuse me um it's not you know, I, I would not recommend it for young children, but mature teenage or mature older to older um, kids and adults. It's also a, per, a, a book that just if you're if you're feeling a little bit down and depressed, if you read this book, you're going to read the first half of it and say, what a horrible life this little dog had. And then you get into the second half of it and find out how she survived it, how she found a wonderful place to be and how the process worked, bringing her from a horrible situation to a rescue to a foster fan, or foster home that supplied her with how to be loved, and then to a family. So it's really a, a payback to um, to everybody that has ever been interested in rescue, adoption, foster care, and loves animals. And I think, too, if you've ever been interested in it and just haven't maybe pulled the trigger or went for it, I hope you feel a little bit more encouraged today to reach out to your local animal rescue um, operations or ARF. I know they will help, be happy to help you statewide. And think about bringing in, you know, a, 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 fur, a fur baby to your home. Or if you're thinking about getting another fur baby, always think about rescuing first. Now, Jan, I wanted to give you the opportunity to read your prayer to Angela. I know that you wrote in the book you were requested to read just a little bit um, of it. And so I think it will help us understand how much heart went into the book and your relationship with Sweet Angela. Well, actually, this is Angela's prayer. Oh, this is Angela's prayer. Yeah, this is what she says every night. Now I lay me down to sleep and pray to dog this home I keep, my special bowl so I can eat and comfy bed so soft and sweet, my one good eye so I can see my big backyard where I roam free. Keep my heartbeats always strong so I can share my midnight song. Help me tell my tale of how you snatched me from then and put me in now. I always get emotional. (laughs) It's okay. Please let me stay here as long as forever. I won't disappoint you. I promise. Not ever. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. But I think that's a wonderful prayer, too, that I can, you know, that I feel like more dogs are appreciative of this opportunity to sort of share Angela's story because there is a spot for it. And just because you are in a different phase of life, it's not over for you either. I think, yes, this is a dog story. I get that. But it's also a story of redemption, a story of hope and an opportunity. You may have had a really yep. crappy start, but that doesn't mean that's how it has to end. And you can be a part of of a pet story or journey in that way, no matter whether it's a puppy to an elderly, you know, dog when you choose to, you know, pay the kindness forward by by rescuing. If folks are are so moved and they are in the area, Jan, where will you guys be tonight? We are going to be at Lemuria Bookstore at at five o'clock doing a signing of our book. And then Angela and I will be uh, reading from the book. Angela's signing too. She's got a little stamp with a little paw print awesome. on it. And then we're going to do a reading uh, around five thirty around 5 30 and if we want more information on rescuing or helping what you guys do at ARF how do we do that Peppa um you can go to our Facebook page Animal Rescue Fund of Mississippi or our website arfms.org um and or you can email us at ejackson at arf.org 
ARFMS.org. And um, how much it means, too, across the state when you see people raising blankets or food or when their rescue uh, leagues put out for, you know, stuff. It, it costs money to rescue these dogs it, it and animals. It takes a whole lot of money to run a rescue. People say, oh, I want to get into rescue. We're like, mm, it's very expensive and it takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of effort. But I'm, I tell people I'm able to sleep at night because I know I'm making a difference. But there are lots and lots of ways to, to become a part of the rescue community. You can help by doing fundraisers or you can foster or you can adopt or you can come just walk a dog or sit in, sit in a room with a cat or a dog that just needs some time. Or you can purchase the Yorkie Who Sings at midnight because proceeds also go to ARF. Where can we get it besides Lemuria? Oh, you can get it. Actually, you can get it on Amazon, but um, I'm, I'm looking at different bookstores. I've been going down to the coast here pretty soon and doing a signing down there. Uh, but get in touch with Lemuria. That's your main source right now. All righty. Or let us know, and we'll get you connected with Jan herself and Angela. But you guys stick with us. We've got more good for you coming up next.